All right, Mark, it's been a great game so far. I think we're tied 4-4 four, four in this four, game. Four. Of golf. This will be the tiebreaker right here. You pick, okay. you pick the mark. Where do you want to shoot for? All right. Nothing easy, that's for sure. How about the automatic door opening button on Hewlings? There's a challenge for you. I just need to bend it around the trees a little bit. I'm first up? You're up. All, All right. right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In it. Oh! Perfect! Nail it! Perfect! How did you nail it? Yeah, I'm pretty good. But you're even better. Let's see you. Right. Give me the binoculars. All right, all right, all right. I'm up, I'm up. Good job. All right. Here we go. Oh! Ooh. Oh, crap! Oh! Nice. Ah! Nice. Sorry! Ah. Sorry! Ah. Sorry! Sorry! Mark, you usually always make that shot. What's up with you today? Well, I'll tell you, I'm a little bothered. I have been thinking about an issue that came up as I was sitting in the back of lecture, and I've been meaning to talk about it ever since. Well, let's, maybe, go, let's go back to lab and talk about it. Let's get the stage here so we got a better, better weekend. All right, let's go try to find that frisbee of yours. Hope that student's all right. <laughs>what was bothering you out there and your throw was so off? Well, uh, if we look at this gene structure, it just happens to be here on the board and I was thinking about this as you were discussing introns and exons today and uh, how the introns are spliced away uh, from the gene and then I, got, I started thinking back to your discussion of the germline and that in the germline cells mutations that occur are passed to the next generation. So then I thought, well, if this happened in a germline cell, the introns are spliced away, would that then stop the introns from being passed on and you're now in an intron-free generation? They'd be knocked away forever. So how, do they, how are they maintained if splicing happens in the germline? Well, I, I like the first point you made, is that if a, a change in the DNA sequence occurs in the germline, it'll get passed from generation to generation. That's right. exact, as opposed to a somatic cell. And when we bring up our genetics material in class, we'll pay heavy emphasis to that, passing from generation to generation because of the germline. But I do have to correct you on another point, misconception maybe about splicing. Uh, first of all, where does splicing occur, Mark? Oh, it's in the nucleus. That's where the DNA is. So it splices uh, the gene in the nucleus. Uh, wrong. <laughs> it, you're right it is in the nucleus, but it doesn't splice the DNA sequence. Remember that the first step in gene expression right. is transcription. Uh, and right. transcription occurs in the nucleus, and you will transcribe, make an RNA copy of both the exon and intron sequences. So we have three exon sequences and two intervening intron sequences. Those are all, this is the RNA copy right here. I'll put the, the five prime and three prime in. Then before this RNA will leave the nucleus, that's when the splicing mechanism comes into play, these splicing enzymes. And they will recognize these junction sites the junction, another junction site right here. We've made the cut. Now we will completely degrade the intron sequences in the RNA. All right. And you are left with the three exon sequences that will then be ligated together. And we'll have a shorter messenger RNA sequence. This is the mature messenger RNA. containing only the exon sequences. You can put them here, one, two, and three, just juxtaposed together here side by side. And so the splicing occurs in the RNA sequence. It does not occur at this stage in the DNA sequence. So even if this happens in a germ cell, the DNA is the DNA right. passed on. Right. It will be passed on with the intron sequences. Those are not touched. You know, while we're on the topic of introns and exons, an evolution may I ask you in your evolutionary biologist right, role here. All right, all right. Do all organisms have introns? Huh, that's a great question. That is a great question. Well, uh, 
just to start with eukaryotes, there's a huge amount of variation. Some eukaryotes have hardly any, and some have a lot. Humans have a lot. Uh, but if you look at the level of prokaryote, eukaryote, uh, prokaryotes, bacteria, have them, but they're very rare and uh, quite different in their makeup. And a lot of people argue that that is about the consequences of having it if you don't have a nuclear membrane. Because after all, as you just pointed out, this is all inside the nucleus. All this processing happens before uh, any of the other steps of translation can occur. So this has to go to the outside. So transcription and processing is separated away the argument in bacteria, certainly, is that there is no nuclear membrane. So as soon as this, if there were introns, as soon as the sequence was made, not spliced, even if that was possible, this process of using it to make protein would start and you would have these introns right in the middle. There wouldn't be a chance to get them out of there. So this is a presence-absence of the nucleus argument. And it seems like without a nucleus, it's hard to maintain this on a large scale. So separating them in s events in space and time in the eukaryote gives it the opportunity Very to maintain and splice these things. Exactly. Fascinating, fascinating. Hey, are you ready to play the, the back nine now? Sure, well, let's, let's go. Do it. Let's, let's do go. It. go. Let's get our coats and go.